Hello and welcome to Soundorg TV. My name is Steve Daniels and if you like audio and music, you have landed on the right channel. We upload fresh content every two weeks. Our aim is to go behind the scenes in the audio industry, talk to designers, introduce new products. As always, if you have comments or suggestions, please share them with us and we will try and incorporate in future episodes. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Today, we're delighted to be joined by Philip Swift, who's the CEO of Spendor Loudspeakers, and Mike Picanza, Head of Sales and Marketing. Spendor has a prestigious history in the world of audio, dating back from the 60s with its work with the BBC, all the way up to today with its new current lines, the A, D, and Classic ranges. Gentlemen, welcome to Sound Organization TV. It's a good morning from me, good afternoon to you. So most of the uh, viewers out there will be familiar with the name Spendor, but if you guys could take a few minutes and give a, a short history of the brand and where Spendor is today. I'll try that. Yeah. Um, I mean, Spendor, Spendor goes back to the, to the very late 60s. Um, the company wasn't founded until I think it was 1971. And Spencer and his wife Dorothy um, set up the formal business. But um, I'd actually come across um, Spencer Hughes and his original design when it wasn't even a commercial production loudspeaker when I was a so, yeah, young student back in London. So my history with Spendor goes back a long, long way. I've no, known the guys in Spendor for many, many years, always admired their designs, loved their loudspeakers. Um, we always got on very well together. Um, but it's only it's around 20 years ago now, um, we actually acquired um, Spendor. Um, and um, I think since then, you know, we've made significant progress. But Spendor was always known for fantastic sound quality, um, but perhaps not, not so much for having um, um, the, the, the style and the presentation and the marketing, which is demanded today. Um, and I think we've, uh, we've built on that. Um, we've expanded the business. And I think the loudspeakers are sounding better than they've ever done. You know. Excellent. Thank you, Philip. Part of the, the reason of doing these videos uh, is we don't have trade shows at the moment. Um, and so we were talking to manufacturers. But can you tell me how the, the COVID pandemic has impacted Spendor in terms of supply and uh, where you see that going? Um, obviously, we've got lots of customers wanting their speakers. I'll start this um this is the answer to this question uh, and Philip can chip in at any point there's a, there's a couple of elements really supply of parts has been uh, quite a challenge various uh, components have either been in short supply or due to shipping problems have been very delayed in in getting to us uh, and that that is something that you can't you know always plan for you have to you have to uh, deal with it because sometimes you're, you're not forewarned of this happening and on top of that we have um, the, the the benefit that Spendor is is growing has been for a while so the the growth of the company and the increase in in the demand for product as well as short supply of of components has uh, and, and shipping issues has also combined to, to make you know uh, some of these uh, supply issues quite quite frustrating at times. But thankfully, I think we feel they're all solvable. We will get past this, and uh, there'll come a time where we get back to to normal in terms of delivery times and and availability. And I think Mike, you told me that you've seen a, a massive increase in sales worldwide as well uh that that yes i mean it, it it's it's we've had steady growth every year for, for quite a few years but but last year uh was uh, was particularly good this year is carrying on that trend um i i think spendor's growing anyway we've got fantastic distributors on board you know this the sound org is 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 definitely 
uh, one that you've, you guys have hit the ground running. We, we weren't sure what the demand was actually going to be in, in North America, but I think you and I are both quite surprised at, uh, at the figures we're achieving. And, and this is the same in, in other territories too. So you add, add all that, that together uh, and we are seeing some quite significant growth for the brand. Also, I the fact we've probably got the strongest product line that, um, that Spendor has ever had, and almost every model is le less, less than about three years old, so it's very, very fresh. Talking of the models, you really have three distinct product lines within the brand, the A-Series, D, and Classic. Can you talk a little bit about those brands? Who would be a, a typical a speaker customer or a line brand customer. Shall I start start that off? Maybe, maybe by explaining that um, our products don't so much distinguish between the specific um, end users. It's more that we're offering products that um, are all very high technical performance, but they differ in in their in their presentation visually and also in the character of their sound, not so much in the, ultimately in the, in the quality of the sound that they're delivering. So ultimately they, you know, diff different models would appeal to very different people. Having said that, um, we recognize that people have got different budgets, different expectations, perhaps even at different times in their lives or different um, you know, part, times in their careers and, and available in interest and, uh, and how much they can afford to invest in their audio systems. So, um, uh, probably then uh, th it then makes relevance to um, to explain what each individual line does and Mike maybe you want to start off tell us where, where, where the A line fits and we'll take it from there. Sure uh, uh, we, we, we communicated or we do all the time with our, our retailers and distributors and get feedback from them on the the the, the customers the clients that, that go into their shops and buy the product and we uh, felt that A-Line uh, needed to be um, accessible, accessible in um, visually, um, in terms of affordability, and be very uh, compatible with a wide range of electronics and music sources, because uh, there's a, a group of customers who are maybe buying their very first audio system. So, they may not be into high resolution streaming or have a high end turntable. They may be using streaming services like, like Spotify or, or Apple Music. So the, uh, the products are actually designed to, to be, um, their performance is there to get the best out of them in the real world. So we design a line to work in a wide variety of listening rooms, for instance. We make sure they're compatible with a wide range of electronics in terms of power. Uh, and we, we voice them so they're always musically engaging. The most important thing really is when people sit down and, and listen to a, an audio system, they've got to enjoy the whole experience. And it's the musical engagement that A line offers. At whatever size they decide to, to go for, whether it's the A1, up, you know, in terms of small size to up to the A7, they, they have to sort of captivate you and, uh, and keep you interested, regardless of the source material or um, the quality or, or price of the amplifier. That, that sort of really summarizes, I think, uh, A-Line. It's a, it's a very uh, enjoyable, accessible product line to a, a wide audience. And how would D-Line differentiate from that one, Mike? Well, D-Line now takes all the qualities of what A-Line offers and then adds an incredible sense of, of realism and detail and resolution. So it gets you much more into the, the performance um, it, it, instead of sort of, uh, you know, for instance, sitting back on, on a sofa and enjoying a glass of wine as we do listening to music, D-Line allows you to sit there and really, you know, lean into the performance and hear the detail, the resolution, and to be able to pick out all, all the fine detail that's there and differentiate between the musical genres 
uh, and and the systems that you're listening to. So higher performance, certainly. D-Line tells you a lot more of what is uh, on the recording and, uh, and and in your audio system as a, as a chain. But what D-Line will also do is allow you to hear every difference between the ancillary equipment you're using. So it really justifies um, and helps you to make the decisions over what ancillary equipment you buy, because it really will do justice to the absolute finest equipment that, e that exists on the planet. But equally, it's... Um, it, it's it, because they're just like a line very easy loudspeakers to drive they'll also work very nicely with with lesser equipment because many many people who buy our products are on a not not a rapid but on a steady up, upgrade path i know i've been surprised by my d 9.2s at home just details in the music that were not apparent before no, they, re no, they really will reveal things you you simply can't hear on other loudspeakers yeah i've been consistently surprised and going on from from d line classic um i know mike and i have been very very surprised by the response in in canada and the us and the uptake um can you summarize what classic does and how that differentiates from a and d every one of today's classic loudspeakers can trace its origins back to one of spendor's original loudspeakers from from those early days in the 70s and what they've retained is 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 the, is the 70s style which some, some people say is, is, is quite cool today for sort of re retro classic but it, but it but it's genuine spendor loudspeakers um were, or originally designed as broadcast reference monitor loudspeakers, and the BBC in particular used a very, very large number of them. So they had to be very, very consistent in performance. So there was a long period of time when Spendor made small improvements to their loudspeakers, but no major changes because absolutely consistency against those original references was required. But when, when that ceased to be such, such a requirement, Spender was able to start looking at the, their, their models and looking at ways to Im increase the transparency, improve the sort of low frequency articulation, stereo imaging, using more modern materials in them. And really that, that's progressed to this day. Um, and uh, with the very latest um, classic line, um, I think they are, they are probably the biggest step up in performance that's ever taken place. And they share quite a bit of technology that is in our D line and A line. And, and what classic loudspeakers have, in addition to their appearance, is there's a warmth and the charm to the sound. And that's something you really won't find in any modern loudspeaker. And it has to be very, very carefully and, and sensitively engineered into the product, because if it's done wrong, it spoils the sound. But for many people, it's, it just creates a, a, a charming and it, 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 ir irresistible um, method of deli delivering music. So again, diff diff almost loudspeakers with different personalities are appealing to some extent to people with different personalities, but, but, they, but they are not um, very important that spend all loudspeakers, you don't choose a particular line of spend all loudspeakers for a particular type of music because inherently all the loudspeakers are neutral and natural. Um, they will work with any music. Classic will work with you know, aggressive electronica music. Um, D-Line will work with the most ele elegant atmospheric jazz music. Um, so uh, that, again, that differentiates the way we do things at Spendle from many other companies. And final question, gentlemen. Um, where do you see Spendle going? What's on the horizon? Any new products you'd like to share? Probably the answer is no, but I'm going to ask. Uh, well, we, we are prepared to share some information because uh, th th hopefully this year, 2021, we will see Spendor come back into a sector that it uh, that it has uh, been in actually from the very beginning, uh, from from the original sort of uh, Spendor BC One days when when it did multi-channel. So we're looking to introduce some products to strengthen our offering in, in multi-channel and home theater. That, that's the target for us uh, for 2021. And that will give existing customers of all three product lines, A-Line, D-Line and Classic, the opportunity to expand their systems into a multi-channel system. So that's, that's actually quite significant and exciting for us because that opens doors 
to many retailers, to, to many end users, where we may have been known as a, 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 as a stereo brand, but in fact, Spendor's always been into multi-channel from, from the very beginning, but it, it's sort of known for, for its stereo performance. Um, is, that, is that right, Philip? Well, yeah, well, Sp Spendor, um, I'm certainly indeed no, no, known for its stereo products, but Spendor made one of the first ever Do Dolby 5.1 channel uh, systems e ever. Um, a lot of people don't don't, don't realise that. But some of them were, were, were profession, specifically targeted uh, for professional use, so they didn't get much exposure in the consumer area. And you guys are unique in, I think, having the last cabinet supplier or manufacturer that you own in the UK. Is that correct? I think that that's pre pretty much the case. There are very few other 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 companies, and certainly none who who are specialist um, loud, high quality loudspeaker cabinet manufacturers. Um, which is something um, we um, we had our own, we've had our own facility now for for, for nearly six years, um, and it gives us such such flexibility in terms of our manufacturing, but also opportunities to develop new techs, new, new techniques, uh, new ways of doing things, um, and we also supply to quite quite a significant number of very very highly regarded um, other loudspeaker manufacturers, and the components you use, um, none of them are off the shelf. It's very much a a bespoke, tailored approach to the manufacturer of the loudspeaker. We have uh, the uh, benefit of actually uh, making our own drive units, and uh, we combine that with, you know, hand winding uh, inductors. You know, the, so at the crossover stage, so we can we can combine handmade drive units with crossover components, our own cabinets, and then we're controlling pretty much everything there is in a, in a passive loudspeaker. Uh, and that's what, that's actually what allows us to make three product lines that have a consistent spend or presentation, but with different flavors. It, it's, that's a very difficult trick to, to achieve, but because we do everything ourselves, uh, we can make subtle changes to these components and bring out particular parts of the performance or the music in the three different product lines. And that, that's, that's what the customers are seeing now is a, is, is a wider choice for them, which um, you know, is, is, I think, probably a, probably a good thing. Which I think sets Spender apart, the fact that you're not basically a parts house bringing in cabinets, drivers, just putting them together. You have control over the whole um, mechanism. You know, a, a, a totally um, sort of in, in integrated business in in that respect. Whereas you know, some 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 loudspeaker companies are slightly unkindly referred to as screwdriver operations, which Spender has has never ever been. But it, but it's having the control over the materials and manufacturing our own critical components that is really fun, is fundamental to determining the ultimately the sound quality of a loudspeaker. Because if you don't if you don't have the right drive units, it doesn't matter what you do with cabinets or crossovers, you can never compensate. It allows us to explore different technologies where, where they are relevant if they're going to add performance and uh, increase the, the either the resolution or the musicality of a, of a product. We can do that. We're not stuck with a particular type of um, technology, for instance, or a material or, um, you know, a, a, a base tuning system. We approach loudspeaker design as, as a whole. Um, so that's why we have uh, ported designs, we have sealed box designs, uh, and there's, there's other kinds of products that we're looking to do in the future. Philip and Mike, thank you so much for joining us on Soundall TV this morning. Um, some great information there, guys. Thank you. I know I learned some things. Thanks a lot. As always, if you've enjoyed the content, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. Any suggestions or comments, let us know. And we look forward for you to join us on another episode of Soundall TV.